Hi, in this video we'll be looking at some uses for elasticities of demand. So we've discussed what, say, price elasticity, income elasticity, and cross elasticity of demand actually are and how we might calculate them. And if you haven't already, check out those videos uh, to see what these elasticities are. But now, what do we actually want to use these elasticities for? and why are we actually interested in them. So here are a few different uses and lots of parties can use income and price and cross elasticities for various uses. In this video we'll be focusing primarily on what businesses will use elasticities of their products for and we can also have a discussion of how say governments that are setting policies can also use these elasticities to their benefit. So the first one is one that we've touched on in a previous video, which is revenue maximization. And so if a business knows its price elasticity, it can choose a price which maximizes its revenue. And we saw that this would occur where the price elasticity is unit elastic, but this point doesn't necessarily just be need to be for revenue maximization. It can just be if a firm wants to increase its revenue for whatever reason, it can decide, well, if it's say price elastic, they can reduce their price. And if it, their good is price inelastic, they can increase their price to increase their revenue. And there are lots of reasons why a firm might want to do that. Say if the CEO gets bonuses for having higher revenue, they might decide to increase the revenue that way, or if a business just wants to increase its market share, for example, then price elasticity is going to be very useful in order for them to choose a price to maximize their revenue. A use of income elasticity is going to be for diversification, and I suppose we could have we could use the other elasticities for this as well, but if we just focus on income elasticity, we can see that selling goods with different income elasticities will mitigate the risks of an economic downturn. So say if we have a certain good where our demand is going to increase, when we have, say, an increase in incomes, as most normal goods are, then sure, the business is going to do well when the economy is doing well. But a business may also want to sell a good where sales increase in a recession. So they may want to also sell inferior goods. And we've discussed what these are. So inferior and normal goods. If a business sells both of these, then in good economic times, the normal goods are gonna perform well. And in bad economic times, the inferior goods are gonna perform well. And so the business gets some diversification. So no matter how the economy is performing, some of their goods are still gonna be selling. And so the business will continue to make sales, even in economic downturn. So some businesses may want to sell a variety of goods, so they're not overly reliant on the, the economy performing well. They can diversify, and so they mitigate some of that risk. So knowing income elasticities is good, so if we know that a certain good is inferior, then we may want to add that to our collection of products to mitigate this risk. Another factor we can see as a use for elasticities is response to market changes. So if a firm knows the cross elasticities of its goods, this will help the firm to react to a change in price of a complement or substitute good. So say if a certain market in an economy, this business is expecting it to say perform very badly, and so the price of the goods in that sector are going to increase, then our business can prepare a response to this market change because if it expects the price of a different good to go up and it knows how that price will affect demand for its own goods, so it knows the cross elasticity, it can then prepare. So it may decide to reduce the price or increase the price of its own good depending on whether this is a complement or a substitute good or it could say, well, do anything. It could change the goods on offer, it could diversify, it's linked into this point, or anything. It can just react, it can change its strategy in response to this. And if the business doesn't know its cross elasticities, it's going to be very difficult to do this because a different good changing in price, that doesn't mean anything to a business. 
unless you know the cross elasticities and how your goods tie in with that other good. So knowing elasticities will be very important in order to prepare a response to a change in a different market. This next point sort of ties in with this and it's just for forecasting in general. So if a firm say expects in the future the economy to be into a downturn and we have a future recession, or say it expects, as, as the previous point said, it expects a change in price of a complement or su substitute, it can forecast the future demand for its own output and then change its strategy. So this is a pretty similar point, but we've just made it a bit more general. And we, we can think about, say, recessions. And we often have, I mean, firms are very interested in forecasting whether there's going to be a recession because this will affect their demand and they have to pl make a plan and say a contingency for if the economy were to crash. But it's much easier to do this if you know what your income elasticities are. So if you have inferior goods, you're not going to be worried about a recession and you might even welcome it because it will likely increase demand for your goods. But if you offer only normal goods, then a future recession, you're going to have to prepare. And this might be to diversify, as we said previously, or just to build up lots of contingency funds so you can absorb the losses you're going to make from the recession. But whatever it is, we're going to need some sort of forecasting and we need as much information as possible to prepare so that our business doesn't just go bust in a recession and we have to shut our doors. So elasticities are very good for forecasting as they just give us more information about our products. So they're a very useful tool for businesses to have. And then the final point is that it's not just businesses that can benefit from elasticities. One such example would be governments as an obvious one, as if a government is going to implement a pretty, say, radical policy, which is going to change lots of prices in an economy. For example, it wants to implement huge, a huge tax regime, which is going to well, put taxes on certain goods and so increase their price. A government can use, say, the price elasticity to predict the impact of this and more specifically the impact on demand and then take steps to mitigate any negative effects. So if it was to introduce a policy that would increase, say, the price of train journeys, well, this is going to obviously harm train companies and maybe the employees that work for those companies, as there may be more redundancies. So in response to this, a government can prepare ahead of time something to help out these employees and these companies. So it's not playing catch up with its policies. You don't want to implement a policy and then a few months or years down the line, realize that you've made lots of people worse off and then have to, after the fact, address these issues. It's much better if when you first introduce the policy, then you can actually go about right from the beginning, putting in these measures to protect the people that you're negatively affecting. And so that's one of the things that a, gov a government can benefit from using elasticities as it can see the impact on demand of its policies and this ties in with this point on forecasting not just businesses can use elasticities for forecasting so can governments so can economists uh, who are say working well on predicting outcomes in our economies lots of people can use this for forecasting for whatever they need it for so elasticities just give us information, and it's not just information for information's sake. This is very useful and can be used for any of these, and there are lots of other things that elasticities can be used for, but these are some of the key ones that we might be looking to add into, say, an exam answer. So I hope this was useful. If it was, please do leave a like rating. Make sure to check out the playlist for more videos like this and subscribe to add some econ to your subscription feed.